Network to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the legend. Uh, I believe one of the most uh, underappreciated DJs in the history of hip-hop. This is Jazzy Jeff. Oh, my God. Today. I wholeheartedly disagree with you, Ebro. No, outside of <laughs> in DJ culture, yes, I just people feel, know what I time like it I, is. I feel like he's one of the rare people who, who people call the greatest of all time. I, I like think that's only that. industry. I, th- I don't think outside of industry, people know that what Jazzy Jeff's full fledged impact and just skill set is. Jeff, how do you feel? Do you feel yes. that people when they see you walking on the street, they recognize what time it is when they see Jazzy Jeff? You know, it it depends. You know, it's it's. I've been blessed to have one of those. Uh, careers that people will come up to me and talk about the DJ stuff. They'll come up and talk about me and Will making records. They'll come up and talk about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And it really wasn't until I got older that I was able to appreciate all of those instead of just one. Mm. Um, So what did you want to be appreciated when you look back? You wanted to be appreciated as a DJ. like that. Oh, man, completely. I I fought so hard for the... uh, uh, over the Fresh Prince thing, people wanting to do the handshake and just attributing me or linking me to the, the the show. And it was crazy because it was actually me doing a DJ gig and it was a really big play that was in town and they all came in. And a lot of the, 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 the cast were in the booth. And at the end of the night, I really want to say it was... Um, either Regina King came up to me and said, you're probably the best DJ I've ever seen. And I never knew you DJ. And I was kind of like, wow, you came in the door for one reason and walked out the door for another reason. So I was kind of like, yo, you just got to embrace it all. I, I guess it's, I guess it's really interesting because this happens in a lot, a lot with a certain kind of celebrity because you're so well known for this really mainstream thing that doesn't showcase what your talent is, you can walk into a room of hip-hop heads and people, you know, I'm not trying to gas you up, people practically yep. bow to you. And then someone else could be like, I didn't know you, DJ. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that's such an interesting yeah. dynamic to operate in all the time. Oh, man. And it's been like that for a long time. And you just get used to it. Um, so I tell us I- about, uh, we have a million questions, so real quick, tell us about the cool thing you're doing with Sue and how you're going to do this uh, DJ integration social media deal. Listen, Sue is a, a, a exciting new platform that basically um, is doing things with artists that they can make money, um, which is very important, especially at this time, you know, where everybody is, just to kind of have a platform. And it's really great because you got a platform that is kind of embraced in the DJ culture when you have platforms that's kind of stiff arming them away. Nice. So, you know, we appreciate it. And when is, when is it available? Is it available now? This suit like for DJs to start yeah, yeah, getting yeah, in there yeah. and building exactly. their profile. Yeah. And you can, you can download it in the app store right now. And it's crazy because, you know, uh, people, you know, they, they're doing 50, 50 splits with on ad revenue with people who do it, you know, and especially during the pandemic, you got a bunch of, you know, they do a lot of stuff with indie artists, DJs, you know, nonprofits get their hundred percent. Like what they're doing should be a benchmark for everybody else. So have you gotten to the point as a DJ, you know, D nice was doing this thing on Instagram, but I don't, I'm not sure he was, he was able to monetize it because it was so big and people, you know, came and asked him to do other things, but obviously inside Instagram, it's tough to monetize. Um, yep. and, and pay your bills uh, performing. Um, so on this Sue app, are you able to say like you yourself, have you started the appointment where it's like, yo, tonight join me on Sue, people lock in and they come over there and, and can watch you do? Like, t- tell me how it works. Well, it's, it's, it's not live yet, but it's coming soon. Got it. But what, okay. what you can do right now is create a profile and, and, do, and put mixes up and have people go check out what you've recorded. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like you 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 know, you can post stuff up and to kind of get your fan base up, you know, and that's pretty much the message that I've been preaching, you know, to to everybody. You know, content is king right now. You know, especially right. that there's so many industries that can't produce content, the people to me who can produce their own content 
can really write their own ticket. That's facts. Super facts. Now I saw um I saw you the picture of you and and Will uh, taking in front of the Bel Air mansion. Yeah. And it was crazy to me to see how many people, specifically the really, really young kids, extra excited about the uh, the opportunity, even though it's sold out like in seconds, you know, to spend the <laughs> night at the Bel Air Mansion. And that just goes back to what we were discussing, that, that kids of all ages, like, love you for so many different reasons. But how, how was, did you actually get to walk into the mansion and see what they're offering and, and tell us a little oh, bit yeah. about what it looks like inside? Listen, it you know, it it's amazing what Airbnb is doing. Just the fact. First of all, let's just talk about I don't really understand none of this. <laughs> you know, that 30 years later, something that you did still has this level of impact. I think Will and I walked around that whole day with our eyebrows up because we're kind of looking at each other like, yo, this is crazy. But for Airbnb to be able to rent the mansion out to people. And to have the, the response that we had, you know, this is mind blowing. This is mind blowing. I'm, you know, I have to a lot of times step outside myself and kind of take a look because I don't see this a lot. Take us back, <clears throat> Jeff, take us back. Um, so uh, he's a DJ. I'm the rapper. First album drops. You guys are 17 years old, right? Second album. Or second album. You guys are yeah. how old? 17? Uh, Will was 17. Second album. No, Will was 18. I was 21. 18 and 21 these hits these songs on this album start going super mainstream you guys are hip-hop kids you guys set out to make do it for the neighborhood do it for the street and rock parties that's what you set out to do yeah what were those conversations like when they wanted you to make more parents (laughs) just don't understand and less you know brand new funk yeah yeah um you it was weird. It was always a fight. It was always a fight. Um, the the crazy thing about back then, there wasn't a lot of people that had mainstream success in hip hop. So so there wasn't a group out that didn't want the mainstream success. But no one really understood what came with that. You know what I mean? Your audiences started looking different. The 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 packaging of things started looking different, and. You know, to me, that was when hip hop started making money to the point that the money became more important than the actual art, especially mm. to the labels. So now you're you're being herded like cattle down this path to kind of make these certain records. And that wasn't that like, you know, what I tell people, if you listen, girls ain't nothing but trouble and parents just don't understand are the same record. Right. Yep. It's a different subject matter. Same, same it's, exact record. Girls did not catch on like parents. Once parents caught on and it went crazy, that's all the record company wanted us to do. Give me another parents. Give me another parents. And we kept trying to do did, records, did they, did they you know, to with cutting that? and scratching. So, but real quick, just to stay in that, did they, with girls, um, did, they, mm-hmm. th- did they say, we like that, it didn't quite catch yet, but give us another one? Or was it coincidental that you guys made two records like that? No, when you think about it, what caught what caught on when girls came out? Girls caught on. Girls caught on as much as hip hop caught on. Right. right. Got it. Hip hop was just earlier. You know, once once it kind of blew up, you know, you started to realize that okay, this is a little bit different. You know, there were a bunch of stations that we would go to that, you know, or cities that we would go to that there were stations that we couldn't go to. That's not for us. And then next go around, it's kind of like, oh, so now we going to that station. What happened to that station? We used to, you know, they we did the breakfast club over on that station. Yeah. But, you know, now we going over here and you want us to do this. You, oh, it, It's really hard to get it when you're on the inside. All you know, you know what I mean? Like, think about it. We didn't have social media. You know, it, you, you had to be a extreme baller if you walked around with a cell phone back then. So all your communication came from a real phone call. So even us being on tour, you don't know your record is growing until you hear the response of the crowd. You know, right now- Or you're, you or you're on a screen. call with a label person and they're telling you that it's getting played at, you know, a hundred radio stations or whatever. That, that, that's the only way you knew. Did and they- them telling you that, you only felt that, you know, you drive into Houston and you turn a radio on and you hear your record, you like, oh, wow, you know, this is it's, it's doing something. 
did when you guys went on the big, huge stadium tours with all the other artists that were crushing at the time. What were you treated like? Did did the other artists all think of you guys as just like them, or once parents just don't understand, caught on? Was there any sort of uh, shame? I don't know, different hate. shit talking, things like that. Um, what? No, no one really, no one really treated you any different because, like I said, I don't care who you were. If you'd have got that success when that came, I don't know too many people would have, that would have turned that down because you didn't know what was on the other side of that. Nobody had done. You know, this was all, like I tell people, this was all brand new. This was new. This was, you know, even going all the way up to when Will got the TV show, he was criticized because back then you you weren't supposed to be able to do more than one thing. If you were a hip hop artist, that's what you did. People criticized him for trying to act and you fast forward 10 years later and it wasn't a hip hop artist that wasn't on a TV show. Um, Jeff, do so you true. remember the day that Will came and said, yo, bro, I got this this TV thing is going to happen. Do you remember what those conversations were? How like what 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 were you guys discussing and how did it happen? We 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 had those conversations when Will and I first got together. Will adamantly said, I want to be a movie star. And I was like, yo, and I want to do music for movies. So this wasn't uh, oh, wow. you know, from, this so this is from like, eighteen, y'all. This was where y'all oh, start. I, hands down, like Will had boxes and boxes of videotapes that he would make home movies. Wow. So this wasn't something that just came out of the blue. Um, we were in Detroit on actually on tour, and Will got a call um, that he had to go out to L.A. We had an off day. Will flew to L.A. He came back the next morning and walked into the room and was like, "Yo, I got a TV show." And in my mind, it was his man, Charlie Mack, with a video camera. Like, I didn't think it was a real TV Shout show. Shout to Charlie Mack. Still right, out right. Until, until I saw the pilot, and I was like, yo, I know half of these people on this show. Like, you got a real live TV show. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. You know? And then the first episode, he was like, listen, they want you to come out. And do it. And I was like, nah, like, you know, we joked because I turned that show down 10 times. Um, and he ended up convincing me and he said, you know, listen, they want you to do three. If you do one and you hate it, you only got two to do. And if you do one and you love it, you got two to look forward to. And I was like, right. you know, wait, I was so like, why, okay. why didn't you want to do it? Even though, like, what didn't you see? What didn't you want? You know what? It's, it's, it's kind of, when you're when you're that young, you have your your goals set on what you want to do. No one ever tells you the path to that goal might not be through the front door. Right. You know what I mean? So it, I was just like, no, you trying to take me away from me doing music and me DJing and not realizing that that show actually put me in a different place for people to realize my DJing and making music. It wasn't, was it, so it was just about goals. It wasn't shyness. I always th thought that you might have been like painfully shy because you've never been Mr. Public Eye either. You've, you've, uh, you, he's the DJ, I'm the rapper is almost like a real view of you guys in life. Get out there, everybody. See him. He's the DJ. He's, okay. he's the DJ. I'm the rapper. So was it, was it also shyness? I, I don't know if I would say shy. My natural personality is not to be in the front. Like I'm, I'm somebody. I want to go to the mall. I want to go to the grocery store. I want to. I would love to. I would love to have what I want, but I want to live a normal life. Yeah, I see what you um, mean. So I think that was that was always my thing. That it was kind of like, you know. I, I never went into a phone booth and turned into Jazzy Jeff. This right. is who I've been since <laughs> high school. You know what I mean? I'm kind of like, yo, I'm I'm not I'm not the guy in the front. But I think the beauty of it is sometimes Will would go too far and I would pull him back, and sometimes I would be too lax and Will would pull me up, and that was what the di the dynamic was. Mm. So you shoot the first one, and how did you feel? Were you like, all right, I could do this. It's not that bad. 
it, you know what? It was it was a hundred people in the audience. We was just coming off a stage with twenty five thousand people. Oh, yeah, so I never bad. thought about I never thought about the amount of people that would actually be watching because that probably would have shook me. But a hundred people, I'm kind of like, wait, a hundred people, and I can mess up, and you just do it again? You don't do that on stage. You don't do right, that right, in hip hop. Right, right. You don't get. Sick I was of like, that. yo, this is a piece of cake. <laughs> So now um, all of the reunion talk and, and all of that stuff, uh, what can you divulge to us today about what's real, where's it going, uh, is there going to be some sort of reunion show, what, what, what do we know today? We got, listen, it's, it's, it's a show that's coming on HBO Max in uh, November, um, it is highly emotional. Ooh. Aww. It is highly and you emotional. guys can do that. We've seen oh, it. Wow. Like, you know, because it was also a celebration of 30 years, you know, like us just kind of looking at each other, you know, listen, Tatiana was 11. She got two kids now. Wow. Yeah. Fact. My kids are 11. You know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of like this. This is crazy. Like you, you watch these people actually grow up. Is there a is there a is there a touching um, James Avery moment? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of touching moments. There's a lot of touching moments. Mm. Yo, man, salute, man, congratulations, Jeff. How how is your personal health? Um, you uh, fought off COVID, um, mm -hmm. and your energy looks very up, and you. How did how did uh, fighting through coronavirus? How first? How was it, and how did it change you to get to the other side? I had never been that sick in my life. Mm. Um, I would not be here if it wasn't for my wife. Um, that I think has really put a lot of stuff in perspective because, you know, when I was really sick, I never prayed for wealth. I prayed for health. Mm. Like, I just wanted to be able to shoot baskets with my kids again. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to do that. So once all of that was over, you kind of start to take a look around, you know, which I kind of think this whole coronavirus thing is a massive reset button of you taking a glance at what your priorities are and what's important to you and what's not. Um, but, um, you know, I think that kind of made me become somewhat of an advocate of people taking this serious because you know it's amazing you know of me looking out and just seeing how many people didn't take this serious you know we lost a lot of people and i and i and i'm very fearful that we're going to lose a lot more before we come out of this to just tell people like listen you know sometimes just take that step back do what you need to do you know and focus on your health more than anything was it? Um, I saw stories, and I and I when I found out you had coronavirus, and and you shared that with us on social media. Um, I think I recall you talking about bre like literally breathing was like felt like you didn't know if you could take the next breath. Like it was that for days. Is that is that right? Am I understanding it right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I it was crazy. I had about twelve to 14 days that I, I barely remember. Um, it was, it was, it was nuts because, you know, Charlie ended up telling me, he was like, yo, when you text me and said, I'm scared, I got scared. And I was like, Charlie, I never text you. And he showed me the text, mm. um, that you just, you know, you, you, my, you know, my bathroom is right next to the bed and, and, you know, I could barely walk. I could barely breathe. You know, I was out of breath going to the bathroom. And even to the point of maybe two to three weeks afterwards, I had to go outside and consistently walk to kind of get your oxygen flowing the way that it was. Yo, man, God bless you, man. God bless you. Yeah. Yo, man. It's, it's, it, it's real. It is very real. And people need to look at it like it's real. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jazzy Jeff. Glad to still have you with us and your energy with us, man. And uh, that that app, everybody go get it and support the DJs and support the content creators. 
um, so they can, you know, because right now with no touring, no clubs, some of your favorite mm. entertainers are out here trying to figure out how to keep a roof over their head and some food in the fridge, you know, and clothes on their family's back out here. So uh, definitely go. And the app is S-U-E, right? Sue. T-S-U. 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 Okay, T-S-U. That is. You're thinking of Aunt Sue. This is yeah, like I- Sue. Sue <laughs> Surf. <laughs> Sue Surf. Like Sue Surf. <laughs> Yo, Jeff, thank you so much for your time today, bro. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yo, right, and, 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 and yo, and, and we would love, you know, when things are, when we're able to move around again, we'd love you have you back on the program, maybe get you on the on the turntables on Hot 9-7, you know? Come on, man. Listen, do I'll do that from shit. the crib. Oh, yeah, facts. Do I do that from the crib. Yo, listen, and then maybe we could promote the app like that. Listen, because if you do it, if you do it live from the crib, can the mix that you do then go into the app and people could go check it? Yep. Easy. That's a wave. Yeah. Hook me up with That's them people good. over there, man. So we get I got you. cut into that marketing budget, get some of that money on Hot 9 too, baby. That's right. <laughs> That's actually a good idea for sure. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, oh, Jeff. Yeah. One love, brother. You. Take care. Definitely. Peace. Right, peace, Jeff.